Am I the asshole for wanting to enforce my boundary? My husband G, 30 male, and I, 28 female, have been together for about 6 years, married for 2. We have had a really good run so far, but there is one topic that we have always disagreed on, bikes. Very early in the relationship he told me that he wants to get a bike license. I sat him down and told him that that was an absolute no-go for me and would always be, but that we were only together for a month and that I would understand if he decided to end things cleanly there and then. He asked for some time but in the end, told me that he was okay with giving this up for a chance with me. Fast forward to two days ago. He came home from work and he was visibly upset. I tried talking to him but he was avoidant until he snapped and started venting that all of his friends are planning a massive bike trip for next summer and that they told him that he should get his license and tag along. He also told me that he was always very supportive of me, which is very true, and that this was his only dream, and I was taking it away. I did not have the best reaction to this and just replied asking if he was serious. He said yes. I told him that he was a big boy and he can do what he wants but that if he goes on that trip he would come back to an empty house. He packed some stuff and is now staying with some friends. Am I the baddie here? I was always very clear about my boundary, gave him the chance early enough to leave if he doesn't like it and just don't want it crossed. His friends, obviously biased of course, have been putting divorce jokes on their social media since he left after our fight. And hash x200b. Edit. I wanted to add a small edit to answer some of the common questions I have seen in response to the post. Why is this such a hard boundary for me? I have lost multiple, a total of six, family members and friends between the ages of six and nineteen. Also, he has known this since the first time we talked about it. Why am I taking out my trauma on him and why don't I get help for my anxiety? I have been in various form of therapy since I was eight. This continues to this day though it's not completely for my anxiety anymore since it has lessened over the years and there have been other issues I needed help with. My last therapy was last week, another is scheduled for next Monday. I also never felt like I'm taking my trauma out on anyone. I dealt with my feelings in therapy but decided that I would never put myself into a position where a death due to a bike accident was likely. Yes, I know that anyone can die at any point in time for any reason. When we first talked about it, he asked me if there was any form of extreme sport that I would be okay with. We have been diving together, he is regularly bouldering and I got him skydiving lessons for his birthday last year. But bikes are a no-go and they always will be. Is there any other option in this situation? I asked him if he were okay with going along on another vehicle. He scoffed and told me that, it's not the same, why give him an ultimatum? This is where I royally f-ed up and I admit and accept it. In the moment when I said it, I didn't see it as a threat or an ultimatum, but rather a fact I was stating. It was not to scare or manipulate him, it's the truth. But I understand that it comes across horribly and I'm going to apologize for it when I can. I'll say nah. You have always been honest about your feelings towards bikes and he made his choice to stay with you knowing what the consequence would be. He has always wanted to get his license and to drive and now he realizes what he is missing out on and is frustrated. I don't think you are the asshole for letting him know that you still feel the way you always have and that if he chooses to take his license and go on the trip you will leave, though maybe it could have been said in a less hostile way. On the other hand I understand him as well, and if it means so much to him he should do it and deal with the two of you not being together anymore. Not the asshole. I may be biased because I absolutely despise motorcycles and think that if you have anyone that loves or depends on you, then you'd be a fool to ride one because they're so deadly, dangerous. More than that, you told him about how you felt in the beginning of the relationship and he made a choice. So you've been very clear on this issue, and he previously agreed, but now he has changed his mind. Of course, that can happen. I don't understand the YTA votes. You didn't tell him he can't ride motorcycles, just that you won't be sticking around for it. Not the asshole. Info did you explain to him why bikes are a deal breaker for you? Like is it a past experience, or you are concerned about safety, etc. In my honest opinion, not the asshole. You told him very early on that it's a hard no for you, that you're not comfortable with it and he's had this entire time to say hey, this is what I want to do, I realize it's not what you want so it's better if we part ways. But instead, he chose to stay, then got upset with you over his own choices? It's not fair to either of you, honestly. I would set up divorce proceedings just because it's obvious to me just over this that he resents you over it and is putting his choice to stay with you rather than get a motorcycle license on you instead of where the blame should be, 
on himself for choosing to stay with you when he could have left. Not the asshole. You told him what you would do. He chose to stay with you and marry you knowing your feelings. Everyone has their own deal breakers. If this is yours and you let him know then you are not the asshole for sticking to it. Not the asshole I think so many people are missing the point that if he gets in a wreck it absolutely affects you. It's a hard line for me too. In the past couple of years I've had four friends die as a result of motorcycle wrecks. Two of them were fathers of young children. They weren't even my husbands and I'm heartbroken and paranoid of it. He can have all the best health insurance, life insurance possible but that won't bring him back to life. I'm sorry you ended up in this situation because I understand in your mind you've already lost him in one way or another. Info. Why is this a hard limit for you and have you had an actual conversation with him about that? Am I the asshole for not trying persuade my sister in forgiving our dad after she gave him an ultimatum? Throwaway account. I, 32 male, have a younger sister, Daphne, 27 female, who I love very much and know that she's acting from a hurt, frustration and being fed up but I'm not sure if it's my place despite my dad and stepmom's pleas. When we were kids our parents divorce and while it was hard I feel like I was able to adjust over time, I don't think my sister ever got over when. When our parents broke the news Daphne was upset and she was teased about our dad moving away and getting a new daughter to replace her. Looking back on it I feel like my parents should have gotten my sister therapy, but instead dad promised her that while we wouldn't all be living in the same house together, he still loved us and would always be there. That all changed the day he married our stepmom, Judy. Not too long after they got married Judy's dad suffered a stroke and she wanted to move back to her home state to help her mom take care of him. Daphne was not happy and resented the fact that instead of seeing dad on a nearly daily basis it would now be on breaks and holidays. Didn't help that Judy had a fatherless daughter of her own, Katie, 29 female. After that first summer at our dad's place Daphne swore that she'd never go back and that if our dad loved her enough he would come to see her instead Daphne having to give up her summers hanging with friends for the parent who chose to leave. Fast forward to high school and our dad missed his flight and missed Daphne's graduation, Katie's graduation was the day before. This sealed the deal for Daphne and she was done with our dad and almost never talked to him. It wasn't until recently that they slowly started to get on better terms. When she asked him to walk her down the aisle he was ecstatic. During the planning Daphne calmly told our dad that if he wasn't there then to not bother trying to have a relationship with her again. That the only acceptable excuse for him not to attend was if he was hospitalized. Well the day came and went, and despite multiple phone calls no one could reach dad. My sister took this all in stride, our stepdad walked her down, and she never showed a hint of being upset. When our dad called me I berated him for not coming until he said that he and Judy were in a car accident. It was minor and our dad was fine but Judy hit her head on the dashboard so the doctor still wanted to run some tests. Our dad's phone was damaged and he was so caught up that he lost track of time and that's why he didn't show up. Daphne said she understood the situation but stated that she was very clear and that since our dad was okay and Katie was with Judy, he had no excuse and asked him to never contact her again. My mom and stepdad are staying out of this but stepmom and other family members asking me to talk some sense into Daphne. Daphne said she's done with our dad disappointing her and breaking promises and doesn't care how sad he is now. I told them that I wanted to stay out of it but I'm getting flack for it. Am I the asshole? ETA. Dad and Judy were in town two days prior to the wedding and were on their way to the venue when they got into the car accident. My dad show me he damaged phone and pictures of the accident so he's not lying. Not the asshole for letting your sister set and enforce her boundaries. Especially because the dad could have at least remembered to call and inform your sister about what was going on. It seems that your sister has the correct opinion of him. But more importantly, you aren't your sister nor are you your dad. This is between them to resolve, full stop. No triangulating anybody. It certainly won't endear your sister to you if you were to try. Update. Some people keep mentioning the phone was broken. The hospital has landline phone service, the stepmom would have a phone. Literally the world is filled with phones in this day and age. At some point the dad would have been able to access a phone that wasn't necessarily his and call the sister, period. Not the asshole seems like he chose others over your sister constantly. She doesn't owe him the time of day. Good for her for setting boundaries. Not the asshole this won't end well for you. If others want to meddle in a dispute between two adults let them do it. No point in putting your relationship with either party at risk here. Not the asshole. 
Do not be anybody's flying monkey. The mess is between your sister and your dad and you are not the goddamn janitor. I would tell the stepmom and her side to leave you out of IT and block them all. No message carrying, no arguing for, do nothing. To be blunt, your dad fucked up again. I get so very tired of so many men held to a much lower standard and then they still trip and go, but, but, but. I meant well. She owes him nothing. As is often posted on other posts, if you are late repeatedly to other people's important events, said people have the right to stop socializing with you. The end. NTA. The family is lucky Daphne is a level-headed, good person and is not pushing them to cut contact with dad in order to maintain a relationship with her. He ruined the relationship. I'm sure it's as painful for Daphne as it is for him. At least his pain was earned. You should not get involved in this. Not the asshole. She gave him multiple chances to be there and he chose. She gave him an ultimatum. Even though his wife was getting checked out he could have called ahead and let you and your sister know he might not make it or come up with an alternative plan. He he shown he doesn't think about your sister as witnessed when he said he lost track of time. It's not your place to beg her on your dad's behalf to give him another chance to disappoint her. Not the asshole. He moved away, raised his wife's daughter who was close to her age, and miss her graduation as a well as a her wedding. Nope, nope, nope. His new family is his priority. Katie gets a full-time dad while your sister misses out. He's the asshole. Info. Did anyone follow through to confirm that the car accident actually happened? Also how did he miss his flight? Am I the asshole for my response when my colleague said I was emasculating my husband? IF 36, married with three kids, work in this company for four years. I transferred to another department and met new colleagues. We were having lunch days ago and small chats when my husband called asking where I put the ceramic pan. I told him where to find it and ended the call. My new colleague Ross, 40s, married with no kids, calling him passive-aggressive is the nicest thing you can say about him, was looking confused throughout the phone call. He asked if my husband cooks. I said yes, not just cooks but he also cleans, takes care of the dishwashing, floor mobbing, toilet scrubbing, grocery shopping and deep cleaning rooms once a week. Ross started laughing as I went on and listed the things my husband does then casually asked who's the man in the house then if my husband's busy being the housewife. I just glanced at him to explain as my colleagues kept staring. Ross said, okay there's a man in the house alright, and I'm thinking it's you since you've emasculated your husband to the point of mobbing the floor, others laughed. I said no we're just splitting duties and since I'm the current breadwinner he took it upon himself to help make things balanced after he lost his job. My other female colleague pointed out that I in fact am lucky my husband believes in partnership unlike most husbands which is a global issue. Ross said that I was indeed lucky to find a man with little to no self-esteem to be gleefully and passionately taking on a role of a homemaker like that. I was shocked and got extremely agitated after he proceeded to say that he was 100% sure my husband no longer feels like the man he used to be before losing his job. He called him, poor soul, and sarcastically hoped he at least still gets to keep his manhood in the bedroom. I was about to yell but kept it civil and looked at him and said, oh don't worry he's doing just fine in the bedroom because he's always been enough of a man for me and as a result we have three kids. Three kids while he, Ross, on the other hand. Everyone stopped for a sec and Ross had a shocked look on his face then lost it saying it was f and dollar hash insensitive and pathetic of me for bringing his infertility in an argument and use it as a low blow and said that I should feel ashamed of myself for bragging about my kids knowing that he can't have children for reasons he cannot control. I replied that he should feel ashamed of how he was talking about my husband and told him maybe it's better that he just stop getting himself involved in other people's business. He doubled down saying he gets to get himself involved in wherever and whenever he wants because it's a free country, other colleagues started getting involved as the argument escalated. Ross told me he will make sure to let HR know about the lovely conversation we had and walked away like he dropped some sort of bomb on me. I got a lot of heat from his guy friends but one female colleague said Ross was rude but I took too far with what I said. Am I the asshole? Edit. I have nothing against infertility and I know how devastating it is for families who want to have kids. I have three infertile close loved ones and I feel secondhand devastation for their pain and suffering. I myself had my share of pregnancy issues in the past and I'm blessed even though my oldest has a chronic condition. Everyone sucks here but he has crossed the line into harassment. Please consult an employment attorney for your options. Not the asshole. Don't start no shit, won't be no shit.
man shrugging. Not the asshole you maybe took it a little far but he'd already gone there. My father thinks it's hilarious to convince people he is as sexist as they come and you would have 100% in the 80s caught him every Sunday washing our floors by hand. Why they didn't own a mop I can't say lol your coworker owns an attitude that belongs in the 50s at best. Esh. He was out of line, no denying that but throwing infertility in someone's face is horrid. And hash x200b. Edit to add. The saying goes two wrongs don't make a right. I am not defending him by any means but what you said I sn't okay either. As someone who also can't have children, I'm going not the asshole. He took it upon himself to insert himself in your personal and marital business if he also put his business about his own, manhood, out there, then it's also open for discussion. You know what, Ross is right. You do live in a free country, which means you too have the right to share your opinions whenever and wherever you want not the asshole. Not the asshole, why is it a free country, when he wants to share his opinion of your situation, but it's not okay the other way around? NTA. He shouldn't have said a goddamn thing about your personal life, that's inappropriate and a hell of an HR violation in most companies. I don't think you necessarily took it too far, but I think a bit of a more conscious move on your part would have been to threaten him with HR before it escalated to that point. Hindsight is 2020 though, I think you're not the asshole at all. Funny though that it's a free country for him to be inappropriate about your personal life but threaten you with our. Good luck, he's a dick. I hope HR tells him he's a dumbass. Ieta for being freaked out when neighbor cut my lawn? Hi, all. I, 38F, have a huge fenced in backyard with a pool that needs fixing and remains covered. It's just shy of an acre, if I remember. I am an a-hole for how I keep up with my lawn. I admit that right now. Tall grass in the back doesn't bother me and I work two jobs, so sometimes it gets ankle high before I get to it. I'm better about the front, though. Anyway, during quarantine someone reported me for my tall grass to the township and I got a letter saying I had seven days to cut it or I'd get a lien on my property for the cost of the township to come cut it. This annoyed me because the property outside my fence is always overgrown as the owners live out of state. But I got it cut in time, so okay. Today I was trying to sleep in between jobs when I heard mowing. So I gave up sleeping and came upstairs only to see a man I did not know on a riding mower cutting my backyard. My fenced in backyard. I thought he was from the township and I was furious because I hadn't received a warning. More importantly, he was headed right for a yellow jacket nest that I keep the grass tall around so I don't step on it a second time, ouch. I went flying outside to stop him and my honest emotion at the time was alarm. I waved and yelled till he stopped. I asked, what are you doing? He said, I'm helping. I was now baffled. I just sort of said, I don't know you. He told me he was my next door neighbor. I then said I was super uncomfortable and told him about the yellow jackets. I said I wish he'd knocked on my door first as my truck is in my driveway and I am clearly home. I told him he could report me if the grass was an issue. He looked horrified and said he'd never do that. I said, okay, well, my plan was to mow this weekend. True. I'm trying my best to get through this week. He then looked at me condescendingly and said, it's so tall and your little mower can't handle it. Okay, that's when I finally got angry. I know what my face did and I said my mower would be fine. I reiterated that I was uncomfortable, I knew his intentions were good, he was inches from running over a yellow jacket nest, and I didn't want anyone to be hurt on my property. He didn't seem overly upset or anything, and I do plan to speak to him next time I see him so my next door neighbor doesn't despise me, but am I wrong here? Is that not super weird? Again, I do not know this person. I think if he'd knocked on my door and asked, I probably would have said, yeah, sure, watch out for the yellow jackets. It depends on if he made the crack about my little mower. I want to be clear, he was well inside my yard, not trimming up against the part of the fence we share. I'm not asking if I should cut my grass. Of course I should cut my grass and I wouldn't be offended if he reported me. Could I have handled this differently? I truly believe he had good intentions, but who opens the gate of someone they don't know and starts mowing their yard? I was so gobsmacked and alarmed I'm worried I did the wrong thing. Not the asshole. It is your property and your responsibility. Good intentions notwithstanding. He should have absolutely not taken it upon himself to cut a single blade of grass without talking to and getting permission from you. This would drive me nuts too, op. Not the asshole. That is. Really weird of him to do. I would also be incredibly uncomfortable with that situation. Not the asshole. 
on your lawn, your fenced property. I would have let him run over the yellow jackets then told him to GTFO. Break into his house and make his bed to assert dominance. Not the asshole. I really don't understand why people care about a backyard so much. This just baffles me so much that I have so much to say but can't put it into words. I didn't even know you could get reported for your grass being too long. Not the asshole. Fuck that entitled asshole. Trespassing, especially into a fenced-in backyard will get you shot where I live. Not the asshole I've done this for a neighbor once without asking and that was because I knew for a fact he was in the hospital and I was trying to avoid the city getting on his ass for someone who was down on his luck. But we had a neighborly relationship. We talked when we saw each other outside. Classic can I borrow some salt, sugar cuz I'm all out kinda stuff. If we didn't have that kind of relationship established it'd be extremely weird for me to be on his property doing anything let alone mowing his lawn. This guy may have had good intentions but he overstepped. Not the asshole first of all. Ankle length grass being a violation? Very sad for people to be so upset over that. Second of all. A man you do not know decides to invite himself onto your property and do as he pleases. There's a huge difference between this and neighbors who are friends doing a favor for someone who can't get out to meet these ridiculous requirements because they have better things to be doing.